Hello there. Are you new to Agile? Are you looking for a training series on using Jira? If so, then this video series is for you. In this video series, we're going to look at the Jira tool and how uh, it is being used for doing the Agile delivery right from creation of project, uh, creation of epics and user stories on the tool assignment uh, the sprint life cycle and to closure. So we're going to cover all of those in this particular uh, training series. This was one of the topic which have been requested by many of you guys uh, subscribe to this channel uh, via comments and also email. So thought we'll do this uh, video series and we're going to uh, have a series of short videos covering different aspect of Jira in the next few days. So they are going to be a video uh, uploaded uh, every other day. Uh, to this particular uh, channel and this playlist so please uh, stay tuned as always we will use a case study to drive the concepts behind so again in this um, video series we're going to use the case study from abc cuisines a fictional restaurant we're looking for an online home delivery service so we're basically they're looking for an online solution for the customers to uh, order food uh, right at the comfort of their home we had covered this as part of the user story mapping uh, uh, video i'm going to provide a link to it it talks about how um, again raj the business analyst who was assigned to use the story mapping technique to come up with the list of epics and user stories in the form of a story map so uh, if you're, if you're not familiar this is this is how the user story map looks like basically it is a series of uh, epics uh, it basically has the activity sequence right from uh, to the left to the right it it tra it actually has the steps which the user would be taking to achieve uh, the objective so here it will be they'll be able to browse the, av the available foods and order it via this uh, application pay for it online and then track it until they receive it and then we went and how we broke down uh, into these uh, user stories which are you know below all for these activities and then also we talked about how it will be grouped for releases release one release two release three that is basically the highest value ticket goes up uh, get it delivered and then the subsequent releases so the the objective of this particular video series is to translate this whole story map the epics and user stories onto the jira tool and how it's it, it gets delivered so that is the whole objective so if you have no experience using jira if you're a new ba uh, you know or you you want to become a ba uh, and uh, into onto agile space then this video series will give you hands-on look at jira and how we do all the things uh, in the particular tool so please uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and uh, uh, we're going to you uh, keep keep tuned to the uh, channel we're going to release a video every other day uh, which will cover the part of the jira in depth uh, thanks once again for watching this video and stay tuned for the rest of the video series hello there welcome to yet another video on the jira tutorial for business analyst uh, video series uh, this is episode number two um, we're going to talk about the project setup in episode one it was more of an overview and if you're a new ba or anyone getting into uh, agile methodology jira is a valuable tool and in this video series we're going to cover hands-on view of uh, how to do stuff on jira so in this episode as i stated earlier we're going to cover the project setup and uh, we're going to use this uh, the case study for a restaurant called ABC Cuisines. They're looking for a online home delivery service. So just a quick recap. So we're gonna load up the backlog and also the sprints for this particular uh, project. So how how it actually happens in the, in the projects is, in case if your company already has a Jira license and, you're, and there's already a project set up, then it's very simple. All you have to do is just send out a request to the admin of the Jira and they will get you added on to the project. But that's how uh, in companies who are familiar with Agile methodology uh, works. But in case if uh, your company or your role is new or your company does not have any Jira setup or access, then the first thing in this whole setup, what you have to do is create a project 
and in the Jira tool. So that's what we're going to look at on the on the browser. So just let let me quickly swap to that uh, Jira dashboard. So in case uh, you, you know if you don't have Jira access, you can add add out to the the URL. I'll put a URL in the description box. There's a seven days free trial. Uh, you can try out Jira for yourself, right? So in the Jira uh, software, this is how your dashboard would look like. So this is uh, this is a uh, test account just for demonstration purposes. If we're going to create a, a project, so you have to come to the projects tab here in the Jira software and then click on create project. So there is classic and try and extend. I would recommend classic at this moment. And then you would uh, basically change the template to scrum because that's what um, we're going to look at uh, all the principles uh, are basically aligned to scrum so create a project you know put a project name so we are uh, we are uh, doing this for a restaurant called abc cuisine so you can just name the project as abc cuisine yeah or abc anything anything uh, uh, to make it simple and then click on create. So what this will do is it will create a project and this project is kind of a workspace for everything uh, related to the, the development work, the agile, the backlog, the sprints, all of those will be uh, un, you know, basically uh, aligned under this particular project which is called ABC so if you see there is this uh, uh, dashboard yeah this is what you're seeing then we have the backlog there's nothing there yet but we're going to kind of uh, create out all those things no active sprint uh, nothing there nothing would be there in the reports because we haven't started so there will be a lot of things uh, we're going to look at one by one but at, at the first uh, thing or the bare basic is the the project creation and uh, as i stated earlier if if you have, if you want to try it out uh, go to, uh, i'll put a link for jira.com so you can, can, can go and uh, sign up for a seven day free trial uh, there's no credit card needed you can just sign up and you can just try try out jira for yourself yep so if you want to go uh, click on the projects tab here it will show all the projects which has been created by you and it will be there and you can swap in case if you're handling multiple projects but usually um, at a time a business analyst works on a single project and uh, if it's as i stated earlier if the project's already created all you have to do is send out an email to admin they will add you up if not you need to create uh, the project as we sh shown and select the scrum as a template type so that uh, it aligns to the uh, scrum agile methodology so that's that's about uh, uh, a short a video on this and we're going to continue the series we're going to look at different aspects of that but for this video i'll end it here short and sweet uh, just create a project and the project is your workspace uh, which will contain everything related uh, to that particular work piece of work which you're doing until next video see you bye bye hello there welcome to episode three of the jira tutorial for business analyst uh, uh, series in this uh, episode, we are going to look at the creation of epics in, in the Jira tool. So as we have discussed earlier, uh, we had come up with this user story map for the uh, online delivery service for APC Cuisines. If you want to check out how we came, uh, how we came up with this uh, user story map, I'll provide a link uh, in the description. You can check out the video on user story mapping. So we did the exercise and uh, there were four key epics which were identified, uh, which was the ability for the users to browse uh, the, uh, the online menu and the ability for the users or the, the customers to make an online order and an ability for them to pay for their online order. And then the last one was track uh, their online order to uh, delivery. So these are the four uh, key epics uh, uh, which we kind of uh, uh, came up with as part of this user story mapping exercise so what we're going to do is let's uh, create these four epics in the project uh, which we created in the previous uh, episode and uh, 
let's see how, how it all fits in onto the Jira tool. So let's go back to the Jira browser. So uh, if you remember in the previous video, we created a project called ABC. I just renamed it to ABC Online Home Delivery Service to make it more apt. So this is the workspace where all the activities, the, the requirements, the uh, tasks, everything will be um, put together for this particular initiative. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start off with creating the epics. So this is the backlog tab in the in the project. And as you see here, um, there's nothing in the backlog. There's no use stories or no epic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the epics tab here and then click on the link called create epic to create the epics so here um, it will be a very summarized option so basically it states which is a project what is the type we are creating so if you look at the drop down we have task story bug uh, we'll come to that later but at the moment we're creating an epic so we have selected epic and what is the epic name and what is the summary so in case if you want to have more values, um, then you, you can configure it here. For the purpose of this demonstration, I've just clicked on all so that uh, you know you, you, are, you will be able to see what are the fields available. So the first one is the name of the epic, then summary, what the epic, what do you want to achieve the epic, and the description. Description is here where you can go more detail, provide a lot of context, and then what is the priority high me highest medium low uh, labels and if there's any attachment you want to drop off here so it will be you can do it here then linked issue if there's any uh, linked user story uh, or if it's linking to yeah uh, any other uh, any other ish, uh, a bug or anything but yeah it's usually the epics links to the user stories so here is where you will be able to link the user stories and then the assignee whom you want this to be assigned. And then the sprint, which this epic will be part of. So most of this uh, values we don't have because this is the first thing we're, uh, you know, we are starting off. So let's see, we'll, let's try to uh, fill up the details which we know. So what is the epic name? So I'll just, as we see here, first epic is regarding the browse. So I would just mention, provide the ability to the customer to browse and search the food menu. Yep. So I'm just providing a quick summary of what is required, what 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 we need this epic to do, and I'm just copy pasting the same thing into summary and description just for you know simplicity. But in the real real world, this would be expanded out to provide more context why we are doing. Uh, and what are the metrics all those business uh, contexts can be added to the description just to provide more background to the development team but for this exercise i'm just going to uh, use the the same text and then uh, the priority the priority is highest if you see uh, without browsing or you know there's nothing the customer can do or searching so just keep it higher highest and then labels, I'm going to ignore it at the moment. The labels are used to kind of uh, group uh, the epics and stories together, but I don't see the uh, need for now, so I'll leave it there. And then there is an attachment. I, I don't have any attachment to drop at the moment, but if so, we can drop it. So I'll, I'll explore this functionality when we come to user stories where we'll attach uh, mockups. And then at the moment, there is uh, there's no linked issue, so I'll leave it blank automatic i'll just assign it to the test account and uh, sprint i'm going to leave it blank because there is uh, no sprint created yet so i'm just i just put all a kid in all the details i'm just going to hit on create and then you would see the epic abc1 has been created yeah so this is how you create epics so now if i go back to the backlog you would be able to see um, this epic here yep. so similarly i'm going to create um three more epics i'm just i'm just going to leave the other uh, fields uh, blank for now i'm just going to create uh, the epic and the summary so the second one is order
I'm just going to keep it simple and provide the Okay, I'm just going to keep it simple so that you we can differentiate it. I'm going to click on create another. So create will create it, but if you click on create another, it will create the epic and then you will have you all have a feel for another one. So if you see here, ABC2 has been created. Now I'm going to create three, which is the third epic, which is the payment online payment or payment, I would say payment for the online order then i'm just going to pro put the same provide the ability for the customer to make payment for their online order yep so this is the third epic which talks about the payment so i'm just going to click on create so if you see abc3 is the epic name uh, epic number and then we have the description so it has been created so we have created one two and three the last epic is regarding tracking of the online order so let's create that so it's basically tracking of the online order i'm going to provide the ability to the customer for tracking their online order yep so i'm going to check it off because this is the last epic in our series so for for now so i'm just going to click click on create and this will create our fourth epic so now we have epic one two three and four created so this is how how you basically create uh, epics so we have four epics created and uh, in the next video what we're going to cover off is we're going to add uh, user stories to do to these epics and uh, we'll see how how we are going to create the user stories and how we are going to link it yeah so again many uh, thanks again for uh, watching this video till the end and uh, stay tuned for the next video on user stories hello there uh, welcome to yet another episode in the jira tutorial for business analyst video series it's episode, episode number four. We're going to talk about the user stories, the creation of user stories. So a quick recap. We all started off uh, um, you know, with a quick introduction episode. And then we had an episode where we set up the project uh, in Jira called ABC, Online Home Delivery Service. That's it's a, just a workspace where all, all the things uh, related to the projects are uh, kind of uh, put into. The third episode was creation of uh, epics. So based on the user story map, uh, which we're using as a case study, we created four epics in, in, the, in the Jira tool. And today in this episode, we're going to talk about how to create the user stories for, uh, for those epics. So that's the topic of today's video. So stay tuned and we will create at least a couple of user stories to demonstrate and then i'll build up the user story map in the abc uh, project in jira yep. okay so let's uh, have a quick look at the user story map so we created these uh, four epics browse order pay and track and now we're going to create uh, these user stories and link it to the corresponding epics so let's quickly flip over to jira so this is the Jira tool. Again, I'm in the projects, ABC online home delivery service. Let me just minimize this. And then um, these are the epics which we created in our uh, previous video, one, two, three, and four, which kind of correlates to this. Uh, browse and search, uh, online order epic, then payment for that online order, and then tracking for that online order. So these are the four, uh, uh, epics which we have created so it's it's here under the epics tab so in case if you want to just quickly look at the epics um, you can just go back to the backlog and you will have a tab called epics here 
and then you can click on it it will show you the list of epics okay so now we have the project we have the epics now we are going to add the user stories so in order to add the user stories um, you just start to click on this button here create issue and then it will tell what needs to be added since it's a first story i want to expand it out so you can click on this one it will expand out the user story options so again there are a lot of uh, fields here everything is configurable if you click on this you can configure which is required which is not required as per your project requirements uh, but for this demonstration just let's try to fill up as much as possible so the project is uh, abc online home delivery service this is the story what is this is the type of uh, basically the use story so we have task epic bug i think we covered epic so this one is the user story we'll cover the task and bug in the upcoming episodes so the summary you can just provide a you know a brief of what the user story is so i just copy paste it just for uh, simplicity and tracking back to the user story map so this is grouped by uh, categories and now in the description i'm going to write the user story uh, i have created a video on how to write user story using three components i'll link it into the description uh, uh, box below in case you have not checked it out you can check it out i'm going to use that same three three part component structure to write out this user story so the first part is um, you know this format of the user story as a who i want what so that why so it basically covers the who what and why and we're going to write it from a customer perspective so so this is a group by categories basically in this uh, user story what we are uh, kind of trying to achieve is um, when the customer is you know on the app they should be able to it should be easily able to browse for the available uh, food items and uh, one of the ways is grouping by categories like breakfast lunch snacks dinner menu so in case if it's a lunch time they want to know what's available for lunch if they just click on lunch they should be able to see all the food items grouped under that category so that is easy for them to order so again it's a customer experience piece and ease for the customer to order so let's try to write a user story the first one is as i told you uh, uh, what and why as a customer i want to view the food items by arrange by categories so that i can easily select the food i s s easily select the food item yeah so it's just a uh, and i can refine it further but just for this demonstration i just want to keep it simple so as a customer i want to view the food items arranged uh, by category so that i can easily select the food item and order yeah so the reason i bolded bolded it out is once you created the story it will kind of stand out and uh, this is the format and this is the um, the details for it so this is what we are trying to do this is the first format who is the customer what is they want to view the food items arranged by categories and why is you know so that uh, yeah, a customer can easily select the food item and order okay and then let's go to the second part of the user story which is the acceptance criteria so acceptance criteria is something um, which will help the development team and the uh, testing team to come uh, ensure that they have uh, you know developed the uh, the story accordingly so the acceptance criteria is the key thing and it's called definition of done so this translated in, gets translated into the test scripts for the testing team and for the development team this ensures that they have covered all the possible scenarios related to this particular user story so uh, let let me go on it, it can be multiple acceptance criteria one two three four five positive negative all of those can be uh, uh, captured here i'm just going to capture one for demonstration purpose so we're going to use benef uh, behavior driven uh, development model bdd again 
in in the link uh, of the user story video you can go and check out the format the template uh, i'll explain in great length it can be used for you know writing your user stories so it uses uh, this format given when then so basically given when then is again like a template so let me again okay so let me remove this let me let me unbold it and then we'll bold one by one so basically given is a context so what is the precondition or what is the scenario we are under when is event when something happens then is like when this event happens then what is the thing we are expecting the system to do so that is the three things given is a context when is an event and then is what the system should do when that particular event happens so let's again look at this example so given customer is logged on to the online application option when and they are searching or when they are browsing browsing uh, or let's say when they are on the home page i think it will be pretty easy when they are or let's say put it when customer are on the home page then they should be should be able to see the food items group by categories okay so yeah we can we can refine it further but again i'm writing on the uh, uh, on fly now so this kind of summarizes it so when the given the customer is logged on to the online application when the customer is on the home page yeah then customer should be able to see the food items group by categories so this is what we are uh, you know we are trying to achieve and uh, we are clearly spelled out so let's say that when the developer is developing it they know okay in the home page okay the category should come test is also when they go to the home page the category should come so that is that is what uh, the acceptance criteria is then there is a third component to it uh, which i call supporting model but um, it can be named as uh, functional models or basically this will help um, the development and the testers to uh, you know provide more context more details so that the it the user story gets as per the requirement so again let me bold this part out given when then so supporting models are basically um like for example in this would be like what are the uh, items what are the categories what are the items to be grouped under those categories so that is one key thing required and then if you click on the categories how should it expand so uh, just to put it together so that the you know it, it's clear for the the development team and testing team if we are all co-located co if the scrum team is co-located then we don't need to go into this details but nowadays it's seen that scrum team is widely distributed the developers are in china testers are in india or the developers are in india testers are in um, you know uh, the countries like uh, usa mexico uh, australia so it's widely distributed uh, team and for that's for that reason having more details in the user story really helps but let's say if you're all sitting together in a single room then this much details uh, in a user story is not required okay so supporting model so this is what uh, we can we can try to create a kind of a table or let's see if there's a yeah so let's create a table so heading um, is basically Let's say breakfast for items. Or no, let's let's do this here. So this would be item one. I'm I'm just gonna I'm I'm not I'm not gonna basically 
uh, type out everything just to give you a, a quick view so this will be item two so this will be category there's a header basically header of the table category and then for item yep so this is breakfast one and two then similarly we can put again couple of items for lunch okay one and two so i think that should be that, sh that should be good i guess so then there is a place where um, you know you can actually add uh, mockups or anything so i created one one mock -up. so this is a mockup basically it gives uh, you know how the how the navigation should work i'll 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 show it to you here so this is the so one of the supporting model is this which is uh, Please refer to the or to the table below for the mapping between categories and for items. And then the second one will be um, referred to the mockup attached for the navigation yeah so we'll cover that i'll i'll i'll, put, I'll uh, display the mock-up once we create the story so this is a high priority so let's keep it high um, this is the mock-up we have had and now um you can assign it to the you know for assign it to you for now but later on we can assign it to let's say the scrum master but at least for now let's let's keep it there and this is the epic link so when you click on this uh, it will show all the epics which we have created so if you go back to our diagram or the user story map group by categories is under the browse epic so i'm going to select browse and search which is abc1 we don't have anything for sprint at the moment so we'll we'll basically leave it uh, blank and then i click on create so what what this has done is it has created a user story called group by categories then the numbering is abc5 and it is linked to browse and search uh, epic so that is what uh, we have done so let me click on abc5 now um, if you see all the details which uh, we basically entered let's see uh, yeah So all the details we entered um, as a customer, I want, you know, so the, the who, what, and why, then the acceptance criteria. Look out, looks like the bolding is not working. Maybe I'll edit it. But then if you see the supporting models here, we have uh, a break, you know, the items like category, food item, one, breakfast, uh, one and two, lunch, one and two. And then this is the mock-up which we have added. So this is a, a quick mockup which was created. Um, nothing fancy, but just wanted to show how you know how it should work. Like so, we have breakfast, lunch, dinner, and if the customer clicks on it, then the breakfast. Let's say they click on breakfast, it should be expanded right out, and all the items under it should be shown to the customer. So it kind of provides more context and more uh, clarity to the uh, to the developers so that they can develop accordingly. Yep. So that is. Um, what uh, what is there in the story so if you see it's like we have li linked it to browse and search and uh, priority is high so we'll we'll keep it for now so this is what uh, the story uh, uh, details is so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add all these stories but i'm not going to go to that much detail as we did for this story but the concept is pretty simple so i'm going to do this one let me just create quickly so if you want to create quickly it will automatically system will create it if you just click on this yeah see your 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 story is created but it's not linked to the epic i think you can uh, again um, refine it further add the details so what i'm going to do is i'm, I'm going to i'm not going to let it i'm just going to link it to the epic yeah here it is 
So I'm just going to link it to the Epic Browser and Search, and then I'll I'll close it out. Then I'll put in all the details uh, later. So this way, I just wanted to give you a visual representation of this user story map, how it will look into the backlog. But I'll go back and add all the details for the search by keyword, same, same uh, who, what, and why, acceptance criteria, and also some mockups and some more supporting details. So let's go and create all the user stories like this. So I'm just going to link it to the epics that's all i'm not going to do anything else so registration is under the order epic so that's how we have categorized it here then login is the next one again it goes into the order epic then um, Add and remove from cart. So add and remove from cart is also a functionality where we are, you know, we are asking the customer, like we ability for the customer to add um, to the cart or remove an existing item which is added to the cart. So if you see, we covered uh, the three functionalities, which is registration. So this is basically a story for ability for the customer to register. Then once they've registered, login function, they should be able to log into the app. And once they've logged in, they should be able to add or remove items from the cart. So it's all linked to the order epic. So it's basically all related to ordering. And then the other one was a good, nice feature that is, let's say once the customer has ordered for like item two, three, four, the next time, usually they keep on ordering the same thing at least i do so this gives an option for the customer in order not just click on a duplicate button and they can order from history rather than you know selecting the items again so that is this duplicate previous order so as we have seen in the user story map all these four user stories are linked to the order epic so it's order epic it's linked and the first two are search by categories group by categories are linked to the browse and search epic so let let me quickly add out the other things as well so i want to put cash so this user story basically is uh, ability for the customer to you know allowing them to make payment for their uh, order by cash so once the uh, delivery person comes in then they can uh, order in by cash this increases the trust, trust factor at least when we are starting out but then these are the things uh, which will help to streamline the process which is online payment by uh, debit card or uh, credit card so that will be another another user story and similarly if they have the customer has internet banking then they should be able to order the order for their sorry pay for their order using uh, their internet banking. And then we have this uh, payment wallets. So we have a lot of payment wallets these days from Amazon Pay uh, to Apple Pay. So all of those uh, should be or could be used by the customer uh, to make a payment for their online order. So that would be this user story to get that development. Uh, so if you see one, two, three, four, again, one, two, three, four, so use four user stories. Uh, basically payment by cash debit credit internet banking payment wallets all of those has been created and they are linked to the payment epic yeah payment for online order and then the last uh, epic is tracking so i'm just going to put a few more stories for that and we'll refine it further so this is the part where once the customer has ordered they should have a expected uh, time of arrival so let's say they have made an order they know it's going to it's on the way and it's going to uh, come by 30 minutes or 40 minutes or whatever it is so that piece and then the other piece is the support if they are not happy for some reason uh, with that order or this is a, a functionality where they can raise their queries or uh, get support and sorted it out and then the other one was order progress so order progress is so the ata will just tell them what is the time order progress basically will give them step by step you know 
whether the food is getting prepared or whether the food is picked up, it's on the way. So again, more uh, more tracking, uh, so the customer knows uh, where it is. So we are basically building on to this part, which is a live tracking. So all of these stories uh, are good supplement, and the final one is live tracking, where they can uh, look into the maps to find out where exactly uh, the the person who's delivering is. So that's the highest level of tracking. So what we have given, uh, we are building up from uh, the ETA to the order progress steps and live tracking. So this kind of uh, summarizes the user story map. I think let me make this a different color just to, yeah, okay. So this is your product backlog and we have translated the user story map into the product backlog. Let me just close this out as well. So if you see, we have uh, 14 user stories. Um, first two are for browse and search uh, Epic, and then the next four are for ordering, registration, login, and then the other four, the next four are for the payment, and the, the last four are for the tracking purposes. So the entire uh, user story map is uh, translated to a backlog. We can go to each of these stories and refine it like how we did for the first user story, add all those details, make it as uh, detailed as possible. Again, if you're in a distributed team, but again, if you're all sitting in the room, you can have a discussion and take it to uh, the next steps. So that's that's it for today's video. Hope, hope you liked it. In the next video, we're gonna look at how uh, this product backlog gets uh, translated to a sprint backlog and then we start the sprint process. This is where this uh, four uh, events of uh, or ceremonies of uh, Scrum comes into play. Sprint planning, daily Scrum, sprint review and then the sprint retrospect uh, retrospective. So we're going to cover all of those in the next videos and using the tool. Uh, so we're going to create a sprint and then start off with those videos. So that's it for this episode, number four, creation of uh, user stories. Hope hope you liked it. And uh, thanks for watching this video till end and uh, stay tuned for the next of the episodes. Thanks once again. Hello there. Welcome to yet another video from the Prefix BA YouTube channel. In this video, which is episode five, we're going to speak about release and sprint planning in the Jira tutorial for business analyst uh, video series. In the past few episodes, we have covered how to create a project in Jira, how to create the epics and how to create the user stories. And in this video, we're gonna see how we're going to uh, do a release planning and sprint planning from the product backlog. So we got a lot of a lot of things to cover. We can get started, but before that, I have also included the links to the previous episodes in the description box as well. In case uh, if you have not already checked, you can uh, check it out so that you follow the story so far and how we have reached to this point in the Jira dashboard. So before we go into the tool, just a quick recap on the user story map, the list of user stories and epics which you're trying to create. Again, the application which we are trying to build as the online home delivery service. And uh, we had four epics uh, which talked about the browse feature, the online ordering feature, payment feature, and tracking feature, and list of 14 stories. Uh, if you're not already seen the user story mapping video, I would highly recommend you, you go ahead and check it out. Again, the link would be in the description box. It will tell you how this user st story map was arrived at. And then there was also a section which talked about prioritization. And uh, if you see the the arrows release one and two and three, the user stories are grouped uh, accordingly based on the business value. Release one is the MVP or the minimum viable product. So this is the minimal uh, minimum features uh, which we can go live or roll out to public this particular product. So these are the, the, the stories which are, uh, you know, grouped across, you know, like grouped as release one or the MVP. So let's see how we can uh, uh, arrange this accordingly in, in the Jira tool. So let me quickly flip back. So again, this is the product backlog. Let me just make it bigger. So there are 14 user stories, uh, which correlates with our user story map here, and it's tagged accordingly to the appropriate epics the four epics, so it's, it's all here. 
uh, sorry about the light, the noise. I think we are having heavy, heavy thunderstorms. The side. Uh, let me quickly continue back. And uh, so this particular is is a list of uh, user stories and epics. And let's start uh, tagging them and rearranging according to the releases. So in order to create a release, you have to click on the versions tab here and then create a version. You can name it release one description start date again or optional you can tag it later so you create create this one as release one so release one is uh, created so the next step is to map the the user stories according to the the release one so group by category search by keyword so these are all both release one item so how to do the tagging is go to the go to the user story so this is the one which we had written earlier and then there would be uh, there would be a field called fix version so here go and tag it to release one yep so that's it so this is tagged to release one so similarly i'm going to do it for the rest of the items in our uh, user story map so that it's all tagged fix version release one then the other one was registration login add and remove from cart so let me tag that quickly so i'm just quickly tagging all of uh, these items as uh, the ones which are belonging to mvp as release one that's just taking a bit yeah so add in cart see so, yep this is the one for the ordering epic and then for payment we had two items uh, payment by cash and uh, debit credit card as the release one item or mvp so let me quickly tag that I'm just tagging the other one as well. Fix version release one. Okay, done. So the last part is on the tracking feature, which is having two feature, two uh, tracking epic, which has two user stories, ETA and support to be tagged to release one. So let's quickly check, click on ETA and tag it accordingly. Yep, and then the support was also a release one story okay so now we have tagged all those items as release one so now what what this gives you uh, or gives us is basically so we have the complete product backlog but we have tagged the uh, mvp items which is release one we call it here so if you're going to look at all the items which are from for, which belong to that particular uh, release or you know for tracking you can go to the release tab here releases tab here and if you see here now you will have something called release one so this is what we have created so if you click on this you will be able to see all the nine items which are you know as indicated in the user story map all of them belong here so this is how you do a uh, kind of release planning so in order for uh, us to release this particular version of uh, the product to the public all these items needs to be delivered similarly uh, the remaining five items can be tagged accordingly to release two and release three and then uh, it can be tracked to closure so this is the release planning uh, but in order for us to develop this we, we won't be able to complete all of these in a single single uh, sprint so there would be multiple sprints required to deliver or uh, you know these uh, items so in order to do that you have to create or you need to create a uh, sprint backlog and then start running the sprints so that is the second part of the video which is a sprint backlog so what we're going to do is we're going to click on the button called create sprint it will create you this particular space so basically this is your uh, product backlog and this is your sprint backlog so if you if you remember again i've covered it in one of our in one of my previous videos 
which is the event ceremonies in agile methodologies we have four the sprint planning daily scrum sprint review and sprint retrospective in the sprint planning we craft a sprint goal and a plan to achieve it the outcome is basically the sprint backlog so this is event number major event number one in scrum methodology which is a sprint backlog which is what is indicated here so ideally you there would be a sprint planning meeting with all the scrum scrum master product owner and all the scrum team involved and uh, they will be discussing among uh, these items which are tagged for release one which would be you know can be taken up for the, this particular sprint so it again depends on the capacity of the team there would be a, a estimation exercise done and then based on based on that they would be able to uh, taken into a sprint so let's say the sprint has an um, estimation uh, like a capacity of 100 story points again this is the first sprint for the team they might not know so they are taking it based on some previous experience so let's say 100 100 story points is the capacity of the sprint so there will be a estimation activity done so let let's quickly look at that and see how how we can do it here so browse and search I'm just going to put it as uh, 20 story points. So this again involves development, testing, effort, all the effort um, required by the team to get it to the done stage. This are the definition of done as agreed earlier. So I'll put it as 20 story points. Then I'll put the search feature as 30 story points. Similarly, I'll, I'll I'll go to the registration one. I'll put it as uh, 40 story points. Again, I'm just giving some random numbers, but in an ideal world, this would be done in um, in consultation with with the with the team. Okay, so that gives us 20, 30, 40, 20. I'll I'll quickly go to the the next one. Add and remove. I'll I'll give it as 70 story points. Then I'll, yeah, so you get the idea basically what I'm trying to do. So all this estimation has to be done and you can see the estimations. Once it is added, this uh, added, it will be visible again here in the product backlog. So I was telling, uh, um, you know, 100, 100 story points is the capacity of a sprint. Uh, the team can look at things and then they can see which can be done in sprint. And again, there will be a dependency. For example, registration feature should be available before the logit can work so that dependency should also be discussed and considered while taking items into a sprint so let's say let's go with first one registration so it's a 40 story point so this is one thing would definitely require then the login feature 60 story points then uh, we'll we'll put in uh, we'll put in search by keyword Okay, and then we have still 10 story points capacity. Uh, I'm just going to tag this for demonstration purpose. This, this feature of uh, accepting cash is just uh, 10 story points. Yep. Okay. So, yep, so that is 10 story points. I'm gonna move it here. So that gives us the sprint capacity of 100. So this is your product backlog and this is your sprint backlog. Okay, so this is how the sprint planning is done. And uh, uh, once the team has committed to this, it, it would be usually like a two week sprint basically. And uh, it, it varies from company to company, it may be two or it may be four weeks, but it all depends uh, on that and then the capacity is determined. So this is in our example, we created a first sprint uh, with uh, one, two, three, four stories uh, with around 100 story points. Okay, so that is how the sprint planning is done. So once you have put it here, you can click on start, start sprint. You can keep uh, ABC sprint number one duration is two weeks. You can put it in the future because the, the planning of the sprint happens much earlier. Let's give a start date of tomorrow and then two week sprint and what is the sprint goal so you can you can type in 
the major features which you are trying to get in so registration and uh, login are the the key features yeah which are looking to deliver okay again i'm just going to this just uh, some text separate but again you can put it accordingly when when you do it for re uh, real and then you click on start this would start the sprint and you would have an active sprint uh, earlier if you had gone it would be nothing but if you go there uh, into active sprints uh, uh, button you would be able to see the kanban board it's a simple kanban board to do in progress and done and in the sprint the items will be moved from here into in progress and it will be taken to done so that we're going to cover in the next video we're going to see how the progress happens how the daily scrum helps and also the sprint uh, review and sprint retrospective so we're going to cover all of those in the next video but i think in this video you got a very good understanding how release planning and sprint planning happens uh, again once again thanks for watching this video till the end and uh, stay tuned until the next episode for continuing this uh, journey project to, to closure. Hello there. Welcome to the last episode of the Jira tutorial for business analysts. Uh, we have created a project, just a quick recap. We had created a project, we created the epics, we created the user stories, then we did the uh, release planning and sprint planning. In this video, we're going to see how we progress the sprint. So this would contain uh, talk about your daily scrum, then the sprint review and sprint retrospective, and how you're going to do it on the Jira tool. So let's uh, quickly swap over to the tool, and um, we can get started. So this is the Jira dashboard. This is our project ABC uh, online home delivery service. I'm clicking on the backlog. So this was our backlog we had created around 14 items, and out of that, four items worth of 100 story points were moved uh, into the sprint. So the sprint um, was created and it's active and you can see there is a there's a kind of a simplified Kanban board here. So this is part of the uh, sprint planning. There's another thing which happens as part of the sprint planning is um, creation of uh, subtasks, for example, this is a registration feature, so it will involve design of the page, coding of the page, and testing. Yep. So I've just created a, uh, these are the tasks which will be required by the development team, testing team, in order to get the story to uh, that completer or definition or, or basically done so once i create this if you see the, this will be the 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 board scrum board or you know the kanban board will be different it will have those three sub tasks which we added and uh, the team what can, what usually happens is let's say this is assigned to a designer so this this gets into moved into in progress and once the design is completed and uh, it goes into done, then the coding of the pages page starts. So this gets moved on to here. And this board gives a real time view of what is happening on that particular sprint. So as you as you know, the second uh, part of the, the agile um, ceremonies is a daily scrum. So ideally what would happen is this will be a scrum board and all the team members will uh, get onto the floor for a stand up or if it's distributed team, they'll get onto a call and they will look at the scrum board and uh, kind of uh, discuss what they did yesterday. So what they're going to do today and if there's any blockers, they will discuss it and this board will give a clear cut picture of what is happening, who is doing what and all everything all those details so it's very visible it's a visual board so that is the second part once let's say everything is done i'm just trying to move it here testing is done of this feature so, 
So once I move all the subtasks to done, automatically the, the user story uh, will be done. So there'll be a um, pop-up asking for that. If you click on update, then that user story is also completed or done. So this goes on uh, until the sprint cycle is so similarly all the other items would be moved uh, to done and uh, let's say if there's any defect uh, while while you know creating uh, or uh, while using testing this particular browse and search feature. So a bug is logged by the testing team. So in order to do that, uh, let me, what we have to do is say to go back. Ideally we can um, create it uh, like an issue. Click on this, it'll open up and then here you see story instead of story select it as a bug and you can state uh, search functionality not working fine yeah so there's a bug you can put all the description again the fixed version because it goes into release one so you have to select that priority you can give and uh, then you have to link it to the user story so this is a search keyword. So you have to link it to the user story for which uh, there is a problem. So it is ABC6. So once you hit on create, it will automatically create um, the bug. Uh, let me move it to this because it's part of the sprint uh, backlog. So yeah, you have to move it here. And then now once you go to the, the board, you will be able to see um, the bug which is added here. Search functionality is not working fine, is added to the to-do. So this is how a bug is reported and how it is you know, tracked to closure uh, in, the, in the sprint process. So again, um, let's say this is fixed. It's, it's worked by the development team and it's fixed. It goes to done and this completes this uh, story and then this also, so let's say once everything is completed, this goes into done. So this is how um, the items in the sprint backlog moves to completion or done. And once everything is done, I think you, you can just click on uh, complete sprint and it would complete the particular sprint. So uh, again, the reporting would not be accurate because I, for a demonstration purpose, I just did it in a single day. But if you're doing it over a period of time, it will be able to give you the burn down chart, the burn up chart, the velocity, and all those uh, details. So all of those are in the, in the reporting feature. So if I go back to the project, the reports will have all those details, burn down, burn out, sprint review etc etc so you can you can check that out and uh, so that that is the the completion of the sprint once the sprint is complete uh, there will be a sprint review meeting so this is where uh, the developers or you know the POs everyone will be involved and the the team will present what was completed in the sprint and to get the uh, stakeholder feedback and if you see uh, now we have only 10 backlog items and uh, the four of them have been delivered and uh, the last uh, meeting or the event would be sprint retrospective so again the team will discuss and check which is uh, which all the where the problem was ideally it is the impediments how they can improve and what worked well and uh, what didn't go well so that they can uh, improve upon and then use it in the upcoming sprints. So once all of these items are, so we had to do a similar uh, exercise again in the sprint planning. So it will go into sprint two. So we move like 90 
worth of it and if you hit on start sprint the cycle will start and it'll it'll continue you can keep on creating the sprints until uh, all of the ba uh, the back the release one items are done and then uh, that particular uh, product or you know so if you see the progress there is a progress so this will go into green uh, once all those uh, items you know, which are tagged to release one are complete and then you can release it for public use similarly again once release one is complete you can add these other items as release two and release three and repeat the process as uh, what we have uh, done so so that's a quick uh, in um, uh, training on Jira. I think these are the ones which are required from a business analyst perspective. There are a lot of things from an admin perspective which are not required. Uh, so hope you liked it. Um, let us know if you uh, let us know your comment, your feedback on this, and if there's any further tutorial similar to this, if you want to cover, let us know. And uh, thanks once again for watching this series till the end. And uh, I'll speak to you in the next video.